Good evening, my name is Garrett and welcome to The Last Call. Tonight's final drink is from Jack Daniels. This is their single barrel, barrel proof rye whiskey coming in at a 66.5% ABV. No official age statement on the bottle. So over the past couple years, I'll give Jack Daniels some credit. They're really expanding out their core lineup. We've seen the uh, Bonded and the Triple Mash get added to that. We also now see their Bonded Rye Whiskey show up. And this is also part of their core lineup. Being that it's both a single barrel, barrel proof rye whiskey, and we haven't had one from Jack Daniels in a couple of years, people are clamoring for this one right now. But again, this is part of their core lineup, so there's no sense on paying the inflated pricing on this at the moment. Where they can get Jack Daniels, you should be able to grab this at some point. Now, I'm really excited about reviewing this because I've been getting into rye whiskey very, very deep lately. I've been finding more and more rye that I just love. And the cool thing is we do know a mash bill on this one. It contains 70% rye, 18% corn, and 12% malted barley. Now, because this is a single barrel product, you will see that proof point shift. There are some that are lower than this one and some that are higher. So you just gotta keep an eye on that because that will change the flavor profile a bit. And I mean, who could say no to that awesome looking bottle? Look at that. So let's get into things as always. And we're gonna be trying it two different ways. First way, neat, don't waste the water. Second way, we'll add just a drop of water, see if anything changes up. And as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hang around for a bit. If you are interested in some other reviews of Jack Daniels products, they'll be up above and down below. So I'll link those there. And we'll re read off the uh, barrel number and all that kind of good stuff as soon as I can get this thing opened. But Jack Daniels is one of those bottles for me personally that always, man, they're always good grabs when they come to the single barrels. Like their single barrel barrel proof, ooh, that is a good bottle. But for reference points, this came from barrel number 23-04047. Bottling date was 4-19-2023 from barrel house 2-03. Oh, that was kind of lackluster. <laughs> like a wet fart. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's already jumping out of the glass. But I love the unique bottle styles that these have, these kind of short, very classy looking bottoms. These are shelf talker pieces. Even if you're not a big Jack Daniels person, when you see this bottle, it catches your eye. I mean, that is dark, dark cola. Oh, that is pretty. I'm excited. All right, let's go for notes. Oh, that is rich. Very rice spice forward dark dark fruits as well like raisin and plum fig you do get a bit of grain sweetness in there as well from that corn i'm assuming the oak layers are hefty this is my first whiskey of the day and i was really contemplating if i shouldn't have started with something else and worked my way up to this one oh but i was so excited <laughs> like i just found this the day before recording oh that is almost getting a black coffee, almost espresso note. A little bit of a black tea as well. I'm getting both coffee and tea. Beautiful rice spice, almost a little fruitiness of like the uh, banana note that a lot of Jack Daniels brings out, that maple sweetness in there. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Chari too. Like, if you've ever been on a barrel thieving experience where they're pulling it straight out of the barrel and you might end up with a little bit of the chariness in your glass, that's what it's reminding me of. Oh, that is just awesome on the nose. Peppery, rice spice, sweetness in there from the fruit layers. I'm excited. Let's go on for a taste. Ooh, beautiful warmth. And we'll acclimate to the ABV and then we'll really talk about it. Coats the palate beautifully. There is actually a lot of sweetness going on in this one too on first sip. I think I've acclimated, but this is going to be a ride. Beautiful spice layer. The rye notes coming out of this one. Little bit of herbal and not really much of a medicinal note that some ryes are known to have. But beautiful herbalness. Almost like a deep, oversteeped 
herbal tea, dark chocolate in here, deep rich fruit notes as well. Like again, I'm getting more like the dark raisins and fig and plummy and just rich depth going on. You then start kind of evolving from that point, getting a little sweeter, a little bit more like uh, almost brulee caramel going on. And then you're getting this bit of spice again. The oak layers are hefty and thick. That is, that's a sip. I really do wish we knew an official age statement on this one. Some people say it's as low as four. Some people say it's as high as seven. We don't know officially on there, but a damn if that ain't good. Dark rich, almost like um, homemade butterscotch. The pepperiness is showing up. Almost, you could say dark rich espresso notes, or you could say like a, a beautifully roasted black coffee, just straight up right from the, the, the coffee pot right to your glass. I could keep sipping on that. The rye spice going on in this bottle. Beautiful, rich, velvety. Even though it's that high ABV, it's got a beautiful warmth to it. It's not bitey. Even for my first whiskey of the day, it's not bitey. Because I've had some barrel proofs that really kick you in the teeth. Gorgeously done. The char layers are there. The fruit layers are still showing up. You're getting a little bit of that Jack Daniels maple going in there as well. though. But I'm not getting the banana that I was on the nose. The taste though is gorgeous. This is probably one of my favorite rye whiskeys of the year. And again, I've had a, quite a few of them. It's at this time, I'm going to say it's going to end up in my top five list at this point. There is just something so rich about that bottle. Even here in the finish, you're left with that beautiful charry oak and a little pepperiness and that bit of rye spice just holds on for dear life. All right. Add a little drop of water, see what changes up here. Under most circumstances, this will help probably proof it down just a good amount. I'm curious, we might do some AB comparisons between this and the single barrel rye, uh, maybe even to the standard rye if I really wanted to kind of have some fun with it, who knows. I don't think it'll be much of a fight, but we might do it just for science purposes. All right, let's go for notes on the water version. Okay, so the rye spice gets a little livelier. It gets a little sweeter, more grain rye spice going on. A little waxiness in there. Still get the oaky charry layers going on. The fruit notes, I'm not getting quite as much. Not getting much of that at all. I am getting more of a tea and a bit of tobacco going on now with the water version. Let's see if we can find the tobacco over here on the neat version. Maybe a little bit on the neat version, but I'm definitely picking up like a beautifully rolled tobacco going on over here. All right, let's go for a taste. So that is a ride too. Banana comes out on the taste, like right from the get go. Freshly peeled banana, you ate it. It is a little more stingy. My palate is definitely dancing a little bit more on this one. So it's got a bit of more ABV breaking up on there, kind of bringing across the warmth. But the char layers are still showing up. That brulee effect is still kind of going on there with the caramel notes. That's not half bad. Let's go back to the neat one here. I mean, don't get me wrong. They don't compare the neat version stomps this one into infinity. But that little bit of water does make it more interesting on some of those notes. The banana note really does show up for me. Yeah, like right as soon as it hits your palate. Banana, chari, get a bit of grain sweetness in there. It's got a little bit of a bitterness going on. And again, that's kind of expected. Water can break up those oils and make it do some funky things. As always, it doesn't matter what you drink or how you drink it, as long as you enjoy it. That is pretty. This actually isn't half bad. Wouldn't be my preferred choice, but if you pick this up and maybe it's a little too brash for you, add that little drop of water. Don't be afraid to. And try to work your way back up to this one if you can. But nonetheless, you do you. 
All right, let's talk about market price because we all know market price is market price and it's always going to vary. So I paid 70 bucks for it. And it seems like retail price is about 60, 65 from what I can see. And to be honest, I don't think 70 bucks is bad. Now, I wouldn't pay 90, 100 plus dollars. I see some places charging upwards of $200 for this bottle plus. It ain't worth that. This again is part of their core lineup and hold out. If you're paying, you know, again, I paid 70 for it. I'm not arguing with that at all. It's a beautiful product. I do wish there was an age statement, but it's a beautiful product nonetheless. Uh, if you're a rye drinker, this is definitely gonna be a little bit different than your average rye, but it's beautifully done. And if you're a Jack Daniels drinker, this needs to be on your shelf. Jack Daniels is doing some amazing stuff and this bottle here just hones it in even more. That is a beautiful sip. I love this one. Again, 70 bucks all day, every day. 60 bucks, I do it. Don't second guess it, grab it, enjoy the bottle. And if you're finding some unique proofs, I'd like to hear from you as well. Let me know what bottle your proof is and we'll do some comparisons on things. So there you have it folks, Jack Daniels, single barrel, barrel proof rye whiskey. If you have any questions about the bottle itself, let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer it. And if you have any specific spirit I should go looking for, also let me know down below. Love doing these reviews and sharing with you the experience at home. And as always, may our last drink of the night be the best one. You know, I even like it might.